Hey guys, how's it going? In this video, we're going to be comparing the Ricoh Theta X and the Ricoh Theta Z1. These are the two flagship 360 cameras, mostly designed for shooting photos and virtual tours, and I have been using both of them for the last couple of weeks to see which one is better. Obviously, the Theta X is the new kid on the block. It features a brand new design, um, different lenses, different capabilities, and I'm going to go into those later. But first, let's just take a look at the photos at their highest quality because that's basically what you probably want to know which one is better at taking photos and virtual tours we're going to go straight into it right now so like I said, both of these cameras are primarily designed to shoot high quality 360 photos. This is unique among 360 cameras, most of which are really designed more with video in mind as kind of action cameras. Now to create high quality 360 photos for virtual tours, what you really need is high resolution to maintain sharp details, the ability to avoid overexposing bright areas like windows, and have great dynamic range just so the image looks attractive. Now I've used both of these cameras in the same place so I can do some direct comparisons and we'll see which one comes out on top. But let's first take a look at the Ricoh Theta X just on its own because this is the new one. This, um, not as many people have used it and seen what it can do. Now the Ricoh Theta X has some impressive specs that make it a great option for 360 photos. The obvious um, kind of difference between the two is the boost in resolution. The Ricoh Theta X can shoot 60 megapixel photos, much more than the Z1, which makes images shot with the Theta X very sharp and detailed. But on the other hand, the sensors in these lenses are half the size of the Z1 at just half an inch. This will make it more difficult for the Theta X to capture dynamic images and capture more color and light in uh, dark conditions, and it will affect the overall quality of the image. But thankfully, the Theta X does have an auto HDR mode, which combines several exposures into one image automatically, and it really does boost the quality of your image once it is processed in the camera, which it does automatically, like I said. The Theta Z1, the much older but still pretty advanced camera, can shoot 23 megapixel photos, so not nearly as large or as sharp as the X, but it has the one inch sensors, it has a variable aperture, so you have more control over the camera and the one inch lenses are really going to make a big difference, especially if you're shooting at, at night time um, in very dark conditions, and even in uh, bright conditions, it's going to be able to handle a lot more variable lighting conditions. Basically, the larger the sensor, usually the better looking the photo is, but that doesn't necessarily mean it's uh, sharper or captures more details. It, so really, either of these cameras are going to do a pretty good job at shooting virtual tours, but there are some key things to consider. Let's take a look at some direct comparisons between the two. Now, it's a little bit more complicated than just comparing, because another feature of the Theta Z1 is that it can shoot DNG raw images, and that allows you to edit your photos and basically get the maximum quality out of them. It does require you to use a program like Lightroom to edit those photos so the workflow is a lot bigger. You have to transfer them, edit them, transfer them back, stitch them together. So, so it's a lot more resource intensive, but shooting in RAW with the Z1 res results in by far the best quality photos that this camera can shoot. However, it can also shoot auto HDR mode. So when I'm doing these comparisons, you'll see them labeled. Some of them are compared RAW versus HDR or just the HDR versus HDR. So you'll see when I'm doing these comparisons which one is which. Now looking at the Theta Z1 shot in RAW mode versus the Theta X shot in HDR, well pretty much you can see straight away that the RAW images do look better as in the colors, the dynamic range, the difference between the light areas, the dark areas. Overall it does look more attractive. That doesn't mean to say that it's necessarily better overall because it depends what you're going to be using these photos for. If we zoom in to these images, the, the Theta Z1 RAW mode and the Theta Theta X HDR mode, you will see that the Theta X, because it can shoot that 60 megapixel image, can capture more details. So when you zoom in, you don't lose quality nearly as much. So that is pretty much the trade off the Z1 in RAW mode shooting better looking, basically prettier images, but the Theta X capturing more details. 
Now if we compare the Theta Z1 HDR mode and the Theta X HDR mode, there isn't really that much difference in how good they look. They're basically doing the same thing, just combining several exposures together. So you're probably thinking, well, why would you go for anything less than the best quality in terms of how good it looks? Um, that is what the Z1 with its raw capabilities and one inch lens can provide. So, well, once again, I do have to highlight that those images are not straight out of the camera. They require a lot of editing and a lot more workflow, whereas the images out of the um, Theta X straight out of the camera, no editing required. In some situations, that's going to make a big difference. For example, I am a firm believer that they basically made the Theta X for people who not necessarily are photographers themselves, but are working in an industry that may utilize this technology for several purposes. For example, in the construction industry, I've noticed that 360 cameras are becoming quite ubiquitous in that industry and the Theta X, while it won't necessarily make the prettiest photos, you don't really need really good looking photos when you're, con when you're capturing a construction site over several months. But what would really help is capturing as much details as possible. To be able to capture that area in a 360 format and really zoom in to areas that may be quite far away and still be able to see details um, and then reference them later on in the project. That I think is what this camera, the Theta X is best for and what it's designed for. Also, even some real estate, not all real estate images uh, for virtual tools need to necessarily be 100% um, amazing looking, like for a cheaper, um, lower, lower priced listing, the Theta X would be good enough and it's easy enough to use. And it's easy enough to use because it's straight out of the camera. It's easy enough for a real estate agent, not particularly well versed in photography to go and shoot it themselves. Whereas they may have before needed to hire someone to do that. So while the Z1, I would say, is more suited to professional photographers or professionals who um, are into photography and 360 virtual tours as a business themselves, I would say the Theta X is more designed for professionals already in, in an industry that's completely different, but they want to utilize this camera for that purpose. And it does a pretty good job of that just in terms of um, how good the quality images are. So as I've been talking, I've shown you quite a lot of images there shot with both of these cameras and some virtual tours, little ones that I made um, out and about. I know I've not captured it in every single kind of environment that you can imagine, but you basically get the idea. I think that's um, enough to show you basically the difference is that the Theta Z1, the images look better, but they're not as sharp. The Theta X, it's not as colorful, dynamic, but you capture more details. So it's gonna depend which one is more important to you. But there are several other differences between the two cameras we need to consider. For example, video. The Theta X has been upgraded to be able to shoot 5.7K 360 video at 30 frames per second. But the Z1 was limited to 4K at 30 frames per second, um, which is kind of outdated resolution now. So if you did want to incorporate video into your virtual tours and um, okay, well, capturing whatever, the, definitely the Theta X is the much better option. Also, it's able to stitch the images directly in the camera, so you don't need to do anything in post-production. You can just have the videos straight away, whereas the Z1 requires you to use a program to stitch them together. Once again, having to transfer things onto your desktop top, which uh, just takes more time. The Theta Z1 is not an action camera. It's not going to replace um, a 360 action camera. It's definitely meant for video that stays still most of the time. But it does have better stabilization. So if you did want to move around a little bit, then it will be able to handle that. So let's talk about the design changes between the two cameras, because that's really the biggest difference. Um, I mean, you can kind of see here, I'll show you in more detail. Well, let's start off with the obvious, the screen that finally the Theta X has a large touch screen, which enables you to fully control the camera. Basically, every option that's on the phone app is available on the camera itself, which means you don't have to connect to it, which means you don't have to maintain a Wi-Fi connection saving battery, saving time, and it's just easier to be able to control everything on the screen itself. You can also preview what you're going to be shooting. You can look at your images after you've shot them just to make sure that it all came out all right. The Theta Z1, so much harder to use just because it has this tiny little LCD screen, which only really shows you some basic information. You can control things like, um, you know, changing modes and stuff, but it's just a pain. You do need to connect to the app to be able to change all the settings that you want to change or to preview and uh, view your images. So just the screen, uh, just the just the screen and just the fact that it's powered by Android, um, it's very easy to use a lot of options there. It makes the Z1 a way like 200% more user friendly 
than the Z1. The Theta X is slightly larger, um, slightly taller than the Theta Z1, but not by much, and it's a little bit lighter, I think, um, or there's really not much difference, so <laughs> it maintains that kind of candy bar shape. Not that you would want to hold it with your hand like this, because then your hand will get in the way of your image, but it just makes it easy to grip, makes it easier to not touch these lenses, because you really want to avoid touching them. Any kind of fingerprint's going to ruin your image. One slight downgrade between the Theta X and the Theta Z1 is that the Z1 featured uh, multiple microphones, so it could capture decent quality audio, whereas the Theta X just, I think, has a single microphone, not really designed for capturing audio, but again, it's more of a photography camera, so it's not really necessary. Plugins, both of the cameras have access to Ricoh's plugin store, so you can upgrade your um, camera using kind of plugins that both Ricoh and um, third party creators, developers have made, so it really can expand the functionality of your camera. To install those plugins is way easier on the Theta X because, again, it's run on kind of a version of Android. You can pretty much just do it on the on the um, camera itself without having to connect to anything, whereas with the Z1, you need to connect to your laptop and transfer them that way, which is, again, a bit of a time hog. Probably the best design upgrade for the Theta X is the fact that it has both removable memory and removable battery. Something that's been missing on pretty much every version of Ricoh's cameras, they were all had integrated batteries, integrated memory, a limited memory. This has, I think, 40 something gigabytes of internal memory and a micro SD card slot. So, you know, you're never going to really run out of space um, unless you go literally six months without. Um, unloading everything, so that is a huge, huge difference and huge um, boost in user friendliness. Having said that, the battery on the X is still not that great. I mean, they're not that great on either of these cameras. I think literally lasts an hour and a half, maybe. Um, I pretty much found it to be roughly the same. I, they say I think it has a slightly boosted battery, but for me, maybe because I use it quite a lot, but um, yeah, the battery's not amazing. But the fact you can swap it out quite quickly is definitely an advantage. Pretty much everyone watching this video is going to be wanting to use these to shoot 360 photos and probably virtual tours. Look, um, it's not so cut and dry like I said before. It depends what industry you're in, what you literally want to get out of these cameras. I have used the Theta Z1 to shoot astrophotography at like literally in pitch black and capture the stars and like the aurora borealis and stuff like that. The one inch lenses and variable aperture make this more like a DSLR, so a kind of creative tool as well as a um, work tool. So it's definitely more for the creative people out there who really want to capture the best images best looking images possible, but it's just a lot harder to use. Um, it's The workflow is longer, the design is clunky, doesn't have a screen, doesn't have a touch screen, doesn't, uh, you basically need to transfer everything to a laptop desktop to be able to really get anything out of it. The Theta X uh, is much more of a workhorse. I don't think you'd wanna be using this if you were like getting artistic with your 360 stuff, but if you were in construction, in real estate, in, um, you know, capturing, in education, healthcare, and you just wanted a decent quality virtual tour that's easy to make, then this is gonna be what you wanna go for. It's 70% as good quality as the Theta Z1, but uh, literally 100% more easy to use. It's also a little bit cheaper because of those smaller half-inch lenses. Um, it's, I think, a couple of hundred dollars pounds cheaper than the Z1. So um, yeah, you'll be saving a bit of money as well. So that's basically what I think, guys. I think I pretty much nailed it. Um, that seems to be what the marketing for both cameras is as well. Now, one thing I would say is that the Theta X is probably capable of shooting raw images like the Z1. And if that feature is added in the future, either by a plugin or a software update, then I would say that this is way better quality, like, or overall, way better value. Um, I think being able to shoot in RAW and HDR would put the images to almost as good as the Theta Z1, but that's not confirmed. I don't know if they'll ever do that, so don't take my word for it, but maybe in the future that might happen. If it does, I'll obviously let you know and test it out. But yeah, that's it, guys. I hope you found that useful. Let me know what you think in the comments, and um, yeah, I'll see you next time. Bye.